Today's video is all about how to go about getting paid to play church music. So to format this video, I'm going to talk about churches themselves, why or why not they wouldn't pay for a musician to play for them, and then how you guys can get music gigs playing for bodies of worship, whether that's at a church or church events, anything like that. All right, so let's talk about why churches don't pay musicians. So first of all, okay, I grew up mainly Baptist, non-denominational, so my church culture is going to vary differently from a lot of other church cultures. But for the seeker-friendly, traditional Baptist, fundamentalist, non-denominational side of music, churches are very volunteer-based, okay? So you're going to get a lot of churches that they don't feel the need to invest in quality players or to really push the envelope of their music production. Now, some churches that are in bigger cities do do that as, form, as a form of outreach. It's a form of footprint in the community. But for the 80% of the churches out there in the world, they're going to be mainly volunteer-based. Because of that, typically, they suffer from poor musicianship. But that's not always the focus of a church. So if you go to a church expecting to be on their paid roster of musicians, a lot of churches in their vision, they're not in the paid game. You're just going to have to understand that, and that's okay. Just find a different church to play at. It's that simple. Now, if you're like me, who has a home church that is volunteer-based, most of my dates that I play out are not my home church. There are actually four Sundays out of five that I'm typically not out of my home church. Whether or not you agree with that philosophy <laughs> is beside the point, but most of my gigs outside of my church home on a Sunday are going to be paid church gigs. So I only really play at my volunteer church once a month. And that's just how it goes. I'm a musician. That's my job. Sundays are my day to work. So I'm here to say, if you decide to go to a church and the church does not believe or have a priority on paying their talent to play on stage, don't get butthurt about that. That's just the church's vision. Every church is a different way of organizing and delineating tasks and their budget to different things. And if they don't want to pay for a worship team or pay for a worship leader or pay for their guitars and bass and whatever else, okay, that's fine. You're going to have to live with that. And that's cool. Just be chill and just love the church for who it is. And church is about service. It's not about what the church can do for you. It's about what you can do within a community of believers or fellow churchgoers. Now, some churches do pay their musicians. And those churches are typically hiring professional players from outside the church to play in their music programs. And most of these players are connected somehow with the main worship leader, okay? Chances are, if you have a paid worship leader, he has a lot of connects in the music that surrounds his area, so he can call on players to play for them. That's especially true in some of the biggest church cities that have paid players, like Houston, Phoenix, Nashville, Chicago, LA, all these places really put a emphasis on allowing worship leaders to pay talent. Now that's because these, these churches are typically bigger, they have more budget, and they want to be a staple in the community. And so music is a big part of their programming. A lot of the small churches, the small mom and pop churches, country churches, even a lot of these seeker-friendly churches don't typically invest that much into their music scene. And that's okay, but typically, the ones that do, they're usually going to be more of a progressive or maybe even a larger footprint church than you'd expect. So that being said, you have to go where the getting's good, okay? If you expect to find paid work in Ohio or in Indiana... Let me tell you, unless you're going to go to a major metropolitan area, you're probably not going to find a lot of paid church work, especially playing on Sunday mornings, typical CCM or other kinds of church music. OK, so what I recommend is you have to go where there's work. And like I said, the cities I mentioned before are going to be some of those main hubs. There are more hubs than that. But those are the big ones that that I can think of off the top of my head. But think about those things when you decide, hey, I want to play music for churches every Sunday, 
Location, location, location. It's cliche, but it's totally true. All right, but what do you need to be a paid church musician, okay? As far as getting the gigs are concerned, really, you have to just have some investment into the local church scene, start meeting people, start connecting. A lot of this, the gig type industry stuff that people kind of take for granted or kind of mark off as cliche, is totally true. You got to market to people. You got to talk to people. You got to meet connects. You got to go to hangs. You got to go to... There are different places where people who go to church also play music. And in so doing, you find those gigs over time. Not being so direct as to be annoying, but as things come up in conversation, sooner or later, you're going to grow your portfolio of connections in the church world and eventually get connected to gigs you can do to make some money. So as a musician, what kind of skills do you need to be a successful church player on a Sunday? Well, for a lot of the churches, the mainline denominations, like Baptist, Presbyterian, you know, non-denominational, most of them are playing the Bethel, the Mosaic, the Maverick City, those kinds of church music, right? They're all inherently simple. There's some things that can be complex about them, but overall, they're pretty much cut and dry, and you need to have a basic understanding of music theory and how to get around your guitar or instrument of choice to able to hang with those cats. But let me challenge you with something, okay? A lot of church music can get incredibly more complex. My favorite kinds of church music are ones that incorporate gospel elements. They incorporate neo-soul elements. They incorporate different changes and different harmonies that you'd expect from a traditional music scene in worship music. So although you can get in the door with just your ABCs of music theory fundamentally, you're going to want to continue growing that skill, okay? No one wants to be that guy that when they call out a key change last minute that you're fumbling around trying to figure out what chord you got to play or figuring out your lead lines or whatever. Having a basic yet continually growing understanding of music is really important to becoming a successful musician in the church world. But I will say the, the cats who are getting paid, the cats who are really getting paid for this kind of stuff, the ones who are making, you know, 300 a service level of pay, they know their crap right? They, they know jazz, they know soul, funk, blues, they know how to play music, okay? So aspire higher than just your 1654 and your easy lead lines, okay? If you really want to be a good church player, okay, you really need to study gospel music. You have to study traditional church gospel music. Got to learn the keys, got to learn some jazz, got to learn how to harmonize under different chords. If you're playing with great cats, okay? And a lot of this really complex style of church music, you have to learn those things. And although you can take you can take what you're given, those simple Bethel songs, and run with it, you're going to find yourself way more marketable and a lot better as a player if you're able to incorporate elements from the complex side of church music into your more, your more simplistic styles of church music. But that's just theory, okay? You got to have your chops up. You got to be able to play, man. Like, I can't explain that any more than I need to, you know? You don't have to be John Petrucci out there. You don't need to be playing some insane licks, okay? But you need to know, like, where the fretboard is. And you understand how to play your chords. I'm not saying bar chords, okay? Bar chords have their place, but they're kind of a cop-out, right? You have to learn how to play your lead lines. You gotta come prepared every Sunday. You gotta have your rig dialed in, okay? A lot of church players do not know how a guitar rig works, all right? You have to separate yourself from the volunteers, okay? But not only that, separate yourself from the the paid cats who aren't that good, okay? You want to be phenomenal at church music. You want to be so good, people want to call you back week after week. You want to be top on the list for who they call when they need a player. And to get to that point, you have to work. You got to really work at it. And it's fun. It's rewarding and it's good music, but... You really have to dive in to who you are as a player and really up your game. And I'm not saying you have to be every cliche of a modern church worship player, okay, in the world right now, okay? I kind of cringe at all that, right? We can call out players and call out styles and call out free chord books on the internet, whatever you want to do, okay? But I'm not here to do any of that. I'm here to say you have to be yourself. You have to bring your musical style into what you play, but also you play to serve an audience. You're not playing to show, okay? You have you set a tone 
and you have to stay in your lane. Don't go past that. Number one rule of being a musician anywhere, stay in your freaking lane, okay? Easiest way to get off a gig is to go off and do something that you shouldn't be doing, okay? We're a fragile bunch. These church gigs are very fragile, and everyone you work with is fragile. Stay in your lane, keep your head down, work hard, and be a great hang. If you could take away the biggest things that I'm saying here, honestly, those are going to be the ones that are it. Now listen, guys, my advice is not complete without saying have a good time. But if you want it to be your job, it's got to become your job, all right? That is the trade-off with being a professional musician. You take passion, and you take drive, and you take the yearning to make money at something, and you put them all together. Like your job is now your fun is now your job. And I'm going to say it's okay to give back too. Maybe one day you get a paid church gig. It's all right to volunteer once in a while for something you believe in. Not every church I have played for... I have believed in their mission, and not every church that I will play for, I'm going to be 100% into what they do on a regular basis, but that's okay. It's become a job for me. That's why I have my home church, where I can center myself, and I volunteer once a month, and I come back home and I play with them. And that's important to me, to be able to give back to my community and to really build something that I believe in at my home church, not just other churches around the Nashville area. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. If you guys want more advice on playing for churches, finding church work, this is all a very thumbnail approach to finding work in the church industry, but I want to answer your questions. So if you have any, please send them down below. And of course, guys, if you have anything you want to say about your own experiences playing in churches, I want to hear that too. I want to hear the blessings. I want to hear the gripes. I want to hear all of it. Happy to field anything you all have to say in the comments below. Have a great one, guys. We'll see you next time on Light Guitar.